Hi, and welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Friday, December 21st, an exclusive interview with one of the doctors behind this petition. Twelve Chinese writers win free speech award, and snowstorms hit northeast China. Evidence of forced organ harvesting by Chinese doctors began emerging in 2006. Since then, private investigations have concluded that not only is forced organ harvesting in China happening, it's happening on a very large scale. NTD spoke with a doctor who helped start a petition to the U.S. government to publicly condemn the practice. Dr. Alejandro Centurion is one of three U.S. doctors calling for crimes halfway around the world to be brought to light. He spoke with NTD exclusively this week on this petition he helped launch to the U.S. White House. It urges the U.S. to investigate claims of forced organ harvesting in China and to put a stop to it. These crimes are so horrific that when people first hear about them, it is hard to believe. But in 2006, the wife of a transplant surgeon in China came forward and confessed her husband had taken thousands of corneas from prisoners of conscience. But there has been a lot of evidence, a lot of very compelling evidence that's come out in the last, uh, since 2006, um, which has convinced me and also many other uh, uh, medical professionals that these crimes are truly taking place. Dr. Centurion says transplant tourists to China are promised an organ within weeks, if not days, of their request, whereas in other countries it takes years. The main piece of evidence is simply the disparity between the number of transplanted organs in China and the number of organs that are available. The Chinese health ministry says it gets the majority of organs from executed prisoners, but even the highest estimates of executions do not explain why organs are seemingly available on demand. Investigators believe the majority of organs actually come from religious and political prisoners. The largest group of these prisoners of conscience in China is practitioners of the Falun Gong spiritual practice. Dr. Centurion and others believe the U.S. likely knows something about the allegations, and this petition wants President Obama to make them public. The U.S. already requires applicants of the non-immigrant DS-160 visa to state whether they have been involved in organ harvesting. In its 2011 Human Rights Report, the U.S. also mentions the allegations for the first time. A prestigious free speech award has been given to 12 writers, journalists and activists from China, Human Rights Watch announced on Thursday. In total, 41 writers from 19 countries received the 2012 Halman Hammett Grants for promoting free expression amidst government harassment and persecution. The winners from China include ethnic Hans, Tibetans, Mongolians and Uyghurs. The names of four Tibetan recipients were not announced due to safety concerns. All 12 have been detained or jailed, and seven are still in prison. They have endured unlawful house arrests, restrictions on their movements, and numerous threats and interrogations by police. Human Rights Watch says these types of oppression and intimidation of writers by the Chinese regime is to discourage others from freely expressing themselves. This will worsen self-censorship, undermine free speech, and prevents the public from accessing the truth. Every year, petitioners flock to Beijing to have cases of injustice redressed. Most of the time, though, they're ignored or harassed. But as China goes through its leadership transition, one group of petitioners is hoping it will catch the attention of new leaders. Petitions to Chinese authorities are often left unanswered, but this man is hoping this time will be different. Sun Han Hai is an ordinary Chinese citizen, but he's one of a handful organizing a petition to the top 205 leaders of China's ruling Communist Party. Their request? Make the leaders tell the public exactly how much wealth they have. Making officials disclose their assets would be a means of wider public supervision. If they put their properties out in the open, then it would be impossible to hide. To ensure development, they must disclose their assets. So far, more than 1,600 Chinese academics, activists and professionals have signed. But organizers are hoping to get a million by March. That's when the new generation of communist leaders assume the government roles under the People's Republic of China. Party chief and president-in-waiting Xi Jinping has spoken harshly against corruption. It's rampant in China. 
Officials exposed are increasingly higher profile and public outrage more prominent. The common people are disgusted by the corruption of officials. If they don't solve this problem, it will hurt the country's development. The highest level of senior officials doing it would have the most impact. Above all, they're the top senior officials, so they should set an example, right? Chinese netizens have used Twitter like microblogs such as Sina Weibo to uncover evidence of corruption on their own. In September, an official from Shanxi was fired after web users dug up photos of him wearing over 10 different luxury watches. But the biggest scandal came with ousted Chongqing Party Secretary Bo Xilai. Though several allegations have been leveled against him, the charges party investigators are likely to focus on his massive corruption and abuse of power. Sun says if leaders take this petition seriously, it will help to ease the tension between authorities and the public. It will also reduce Reduce the tens of thousands of petitioners who go to Beijing each year, often because of corruption and mistreatment by officials. Today is December 21st, the last day of the Mayan calendar. Everything appears to be business as usual, but a large snowstorm has engulfed some of China's eastern and northeastern provinces. In the capital, about an inch of snow fell at the Beijing International Airport earlier today. 34 flights were cancelled. Further south, flights from Hebei and Shandong provinces were suspended or cancelled due to the heavy snow and fog. State media reported that nine people have already died in a freeway accident in Shandong province. 61 were injured. Passenger vehicles with more than seven seats were banned from highways in Henan province. Officials want to avoid accidents with high casualties. The National Meteorological Center predicts more fog and snow for the central and northern provinces and heavy rain in the south over the next three days. And coming up after the break, growing pains for the controversial Confucius Institute. Why did CCTV air this movie seven years after it was released? And why these shoppers are looking past Chinese-made Christmas ornaments? And welcome back. The Chinese regime this week encouraged a state-sanctioned education organization to continue to expand around the world. Confucius Institutes have been set up in numerous schools and college campuses, including here in the U.S. They're meant to be a destination for students to learn about China, but the institutes are experiencing some growing pains. And analysts say it's because the schools aren't just about education. With China's rise on the world stage, interest in the Chinese language and culture has also spiked. The Chinese regime has seized the opportunity to expand its soft power. Since 2005, these schools have been rolling out around the world. There are now 400 Confucius Institutes in 108 countries. But this week, organizers of the institutes say they've hit a bottleneck, teacher shortage. A former professor from Shandong University says that's because the Confucius Institutes are not purely for education. Han Ban, the state-backed organization that oversees the schools, has close ties with the United Front Work Department. It's a Communist Party branch that garners support for the Communist Party from external groups. They set up Confucius Institutes and promote Confucius to embellish the party's communist ideology. They're not always welcome overseas. As for the teacher shortage, those with real talent aren't interested in teaching there. Confucius Institutes are set up with foreign universities and schools, usually with a handsome amount of investment. The Chinese government gives a lot of money to international schools to allow them to set up Confucius Institutes. They're trying to export communist culture. It's part of the party's propaganda plan. That aspect has come under close scrutiny. In March this year, this report was submitted to the U.S. House Committee on Foreign Affairs. It cautioned against the Institute's political objectives. Those suspicions were fueled by clips like this, videos part of the teaching material, teaching U.S. kids the communist regime's version of the Korean War. During the seventh conference of the Confucius Institutes this week, senior communist official Liu Yandong said the regime would continue to support the expansion of these institutes. 
The movie V for Vendetta is known for a certain kind of rebellious liberal sentiment. That's the main reason why it was kept off Chinese TV and criticized in the Communist Party press. But now an official channel has shown the film, leading to much speculation. Good evening, London. Why would an authoritarian regime show a strident anti-authoritarian film that sends a message to overthrow a repressive regime? That's the question many are asking after state-run CCTV, a tightly managed propaganda mouthpiece, aired V for Vendetta last Friday. No explicit reason was given for the showing of the now seven-year-old film, and that got China's netizens wondering. Many expressed disbelief. Others linked it to the apparent reform efforts of the country's new communist leaders, but a former propaganda staff isn't so sure. Just like the media reports on anti-corruption, on arrest of corrupt officials, and so on, it seems the government is working hard, and the public doesn't have to worry about it. That's actually forming an illusion for the public to keep hope in the regime. Complicating the picture is the huge size of the Communist Party's propaganda apparatus and the diverse views of those inside the system. Also, the censorship system is not strictly governed by law. And different criteria are used for different subject matters. It may relax control for a while, but it isn't equal to lifting censorship. It only shows that a specific party official, and not the entire censorship system, may be more open-minded to a certain topic. One thing the film showing conveys for sure, though, at least some insiders are pushing the case for easing China's draconian censorship rules. Bright and cherry Christmas ornaments are filling up shops around the world, and one town in Mexico continues a long tradition of producing good quality handmade ornaments. But business has suffered for them since cheap Chinese exports fill the market, but they haven't lost out completely. Glass blowers in a small Mexican town making Christmas ornaments. This little town has a reputation for high quality handmade glass ornaments. But production has dropped in recent years since cheaper mass-produced decorations from China hit the world market. And instead of exporting 60% of their merchandise, this year local transaction will account for the majority of sales. An employee of the original ornament factory Adornos Navideños says they sell to buyers that want quality over low prices. <laughs> Instead of marketing baubles that cost 40 cents, we must participate in the market for baubles that cost 150 or two dollars per ornament, but in which people see the value, recognize the value, and buy them. While the domestic market does not replace global sales, faithful Mexican buyers like this one at least keep it afloat. A friend told me that they sell Chinese ones in the stores very cheaply, but I told her that I won't change. They may be much cheaper, but the quality just isn't the same. These are very good. In the 1980s, Adornos Navideños had around 1,000 employees. Over the years, the factory has had to downsize and now employs only about 200. Chinese goods are hard to compete with because of cheap labor and tax, environmental, labor and human rights laws. Also driving down prices is China's large prison labor system. Prisoners are often forced to make goods that are then sold internationally. Since the workers are not paid, the advantage is high. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our new YouTube channel, NTD on China, where you'll find all of NTD's China content. Coming up next is this week's episode of Discovering China. Stay tuned.